Okay, this video is show, to show you how to work the third or hard level in DC mesh equations tutorial in CircuitTutor. So let's look at an example first. And one of the things that's new here is that we have current sources that are not on the exterior of the circuit, where they're shared only between one mesh and the reference mesh. And we're not writing a KVL equation for the reference mesh, which is the outer uh, circuit. So that wasn't a problem. But now we normally would try to write a KVL equation, for example, for mesh one. Well, we actually can't do that here because we know the voltage across the resistor, that's easily found from Ohm's law. We know the voltage across the voltage source is given by the value of the source, but the voltage across a current source, unfortunately, that's whatever it needs to be. Therefore, we don't know a priori what that is. And Likewise, for mesh two, we have the same problem because it also involves a current source. Now, mesh three and four, sure, we can do those because there's no current sources involved in those meshes. But meshes one and two, we have a problem. So what we actually do then in this first equation is we're going to use the concept of a super mesh as discussed um, in lecture or in your textbook. And the idea is that we're going to kind of merge these two meshes into a single mesh when they have a shared current source between them. And then we're gonna make this path going around both meshes, which is this dotted red line here. And we're going to make that the path over which we write our KVL equation. So now we avoid going through that current source and therefore we don't need to know the voltage across it. And the plus and minus signs here indicate the different voltage drops around that super mesh path that's called when we combine two meshes together. Neither one is really a mesh. I mean, the, well, the entire path is not really a mesh but it's a combination of two meshes, which is therefore called a super mesh. Okay, so um, again, these voltage drops are color coded and illustrate um, the four voltage drops around that mesh. And then the other meshes are more straightforward. We just have the usual method there for a mesh, uh, writing a KVL equation as we had on the earlier levels. Um, now you also had the option to view constraint equation explanations and um, the individual uh, KVL equations. There was a detailed explanation there, which I didn't click on this time. Okay, and for the SOT variables, now we also want the dissipated power and resistor. So that's just gonna be the I squared R type of formula. So that's shown here. There's only one current going through that resistor that, that isn't a, a zero valued reference current. So that's simple. And now we also are asking for the supplied power by a voltage source. And that's actually not too hard a mesh analysis because it's voltage times current, um, but we wanna use active sign convention since it's a supplied power, which means we want the current of the source to be coming out of the positive side, right? That's the active sign convention. So the current coming out of the positive side, well, that's just I1. So we just multiply I1 times the value of the source, which is the two volts, and that's gonna be the supplied power. Okay, so now let's actually work a problem at the hard level. And again, it's advising us to do the simpler equations before we do the more complicated ones, which is generally a good idea. So let's start, uh, for example, by writing a current constraint equation for our one current source. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see that there are actually two currents going through that current source. So we are gonna have a difference of currents equal to its value. So we need to use this term and two mesh currents, that is. Um, and the value, of course, is the four amps. So the current that goes in its direction of the source is I3, so that'll be a plus sign. And I4 goes opposite to the source, so that has to be subtracted to get the four amp value. So the difference of those two circulating or mesh currents is the actual current through that branch, which is the four amps. So that's correct. Um, now let's do the SOT variable equations. So let's do the SOT power of the, uh, or the absorbed power of the five volt source. So we'll pick SOT branch power. And again, it's reminding us about the different uh, palettes of, of terms here. So the power absorbing the five volt source, um, and actually we have two different things to do here. So I'll write that one first. Um, again, that's gonna be a voltage times a current. In this case, it's gonna be one mesh current um, times the value of the source. And so this would be the appropriate term. And of course, the, the hint here tells you that. So since we want uh, 
absorbed power, we need to use the passive sign convention. So we want the current actually going into the plus side. So that's actually going to be minus I1 in this case. And then that will be multiplied by the value of the source. So that uh, uses the correct sign convention for absorbed power. We want the passive sign convention, not the active sign convention. So when we check that, that'll be correct. And then we have to also write an equation for the power dissipated in the three ohm resistor. Well, there's two mesh currents going through that, so we have to take their difference to get the net branch current and then square that using the usual I squared R type of formula. So the resistance, of course, will just be the three ohms. And then the two currents involved are I1 and I2. I don't care about their polarities here because, after all, when you take a difference and square it, it doesn't matter whether it's I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the equal sign there. So there's not even an equation. So I need to put the equal sign in, and that should be good. Okay. So next we'll do the KVL equations. And let's first do it for mesh one. Um, so we have uh, a fixed voltage, and then we're going to have a single mesh current. Uh, that's not a reference current through six ohms. And then through this one, we're going to have a difference in mesh current. So we need this type of term. These are terms are for dependent sources, and we don't have any of those in this problem, the diamond-shaped sources. Okay, so that sums to zero. And now I'm going to add voltage drops going clockwise, as I always do. And the first thing is actually a voltage rise of 5 volts because it's minus to plus. So that's going to be a minus 5 is the voltage drop. And then the next voltage drop is simply Ohm's law using the passive sign convention. So that's just I1 times the 6 ohms. And then coming down here, the plus and the minus, to use passive sign convention, I need I1 with a plus sign. And then the I2 that's going up through it, that's active sign convention, basically. So that has a minus sign. And then, of course, we put in the value of that resistor, the 3 ohms. And that's correct for the mesh 1. Now mesh 2, just three resistors. So one has a difference occurrence. Another has a difference occurrence, and the third one is a single current. So we need those terms. And so I'll start in lower left again, and that will be I2 minus I1 times the 3 ohms, using passive sign convention for the I2 and active sign convention for I1. Then <clears throat> the uh, current going to the right through the 7 ohms, which produces the voltage drop plus and minus, that would be I2 minus I3. And using, as always, a passive and active sign convention. And that multiplies the 7 ohms. And then finally, we have the 2 ohms, and that's going to be just the I2, just the one uh, non reference current there. And so that's correct. And finally, we'll write this. Um, now, we can't do it, however, for mesh 3 because we have a current source in mesh 3. And the same thing for mesh 4. So that's where we have to use this concept of a super mesh, combining those two meshes together into a larger path that goes around like this. So imagine just sort of cutting out that current source, if you will, and going around like that. So let's start in the lower left. And so the first thing will be a single mesh current there. It's a resistor, another single mesh current, although it's a different mesh current through this resistor. And then coming back, um, I will have two different mesh currents going through 7 ohms, and then I'll be back to my starting point, so that will be equal to 0. So writing the details then, that will be I3, and this will be the plus and the minus times the 9 ohms. That's the voltage drop going from left to right through that resistor. Then continuing around my super mesh, I have the voltage drop here, so that's going to be now I4, because this resistor has a different mesh current in it, times the 5 ohms, again, passive sign convention. And then finally coming back this way, I have plus and minus. So the current going in that direction is I3, which has the passive sign convention. And then I2 is going the opposite direction, so it's active sign convention as a minus sign. And then, of course, I have to fill in the value. Um, that would be the uh, 7 ohm um, resistor. And that is now correct. And I've written all the equations that I need. And as always, I can see a detailed explanation if I need that um, with some of these details. So that's it for level three.